Hello, this is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here to talk to you about Emmanuel de Falla's ballet, the complete ballet, The Three-Cornered Hat, El Sombrero de Tres Picos. Such an amazingly beautiful, entertaining piece of music. You know, people know it from the suites. There are two suites. There are also sometimes three dances, which is the second suite or maybe the first suite. I don't know. The bits of it get played. But you really need to have the work complete, even though it takes a little time to get started. You know, the story is the same as Hugo Wolf's opera, Der Corregidor. You know, it's, it's about a magistrate who is trying to seduce a miller's wife. It's a comedy. And it takes a little time, the ballet anyway, Hugo Wolf takes a lot of time, uh, to get going. <laughs> Originally, you know, it begins with the miller trying to train this bird to cheep or peep or whatever it does, and 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 Faya imitates that sound of the bird with annoying accuracy using some violin harmonics and piccolo tweety things. And the miller's wife feeds it a grape and it cheeps and everyone's happy and then the plot starts and it consists of a series of dances with a couple of you know, vocal bits interspersed just for variety um, using the flamenco style, the so-called canto hondo, the profound, deep, soulful Spanish song. It's just brilliant and terrific. It was a Diaghilev commission that was premiered in 1919. And Faya actually had done an earlier pantomime version of the same story, which is available. There's, a, there's an excellent version that just came out on Naxos, if you want to hear that. It's missing some of you know, the more highly developed dances um, that you hear in the complete work. And it's also not as interestingly orchestrated. It's for a smaller chamber ensemble. The full score is one of the glories of national romantic music. Um, it's remarkable, actually, for its, its incredible detail and precision. You know, the full orchestra doesn't play until the final dance, the concluding hota. Up until then, it's, it's also almost a chamber orchestra with just a couple of horns, but of course, there's plenty of percussion and there are harps and <laughs> all kinds of other things going too. So, you know, it's, it's not lacking in color. But Faya always scored with the most amazing restraint. And like so many composers who wrote like five pieces of music in their whole lives, he spent ages just polishing and polishing and perfecting until every single note was completely necessary and the right thing in the right place. Now, recordings of this work come and go all over the place. And, and I've been looking at like Amazon and some other sources and I am just horrified by what I see there. You know, you don't know what's available. You don't know what it's going to cost. Things that used to be budget priced are selling for $975 from third party sellers. There's all kinds of craziness and nonsense going on. And I do try to find things that are going to be available. But I think because it, the market is in such a state of chaos, it makes sense to talk about the best performances and then hope that we know what they are so when they show up, if we can't find them right away, we can at least grab them when they pass by. You just have to be quick off the gun in order to get these things. And I'm sorry if that's a frustrating experience. It's frustrating for all of us. That's for damn sure. I mean, it's just, it's just nuts, but there's nothing we can do about it. Some of you as commentators have been extremely helpful um, in locating and sourcing discs and posting where you can find them. And I encourage you to keep doing that because it's a wonderful service and a lot of you have much more experience at the hunting and gathering aspect of this than I have because I've been hunting and gathering for about 35, 40 years now. And I just, you know, have a pile of stuff that I've collected, especially back in the days when everything was readily available. So if I'm not as current as I should be. I apologize to you all. But anyway, let's talk about recordings now. The funny thing about this ballet is that just about everybody did it. I mean, major either the dances or the complete ballet. But not only are Spanish conductors not always the best at it, witness the recent Pablo Harris Casado on Harmonia Mundi, which is completely uninteresting and in my view, somewhat unidiomatic, you know, lacking in soul and, and earthiness and and textural interest, but 
you know, major conductors did it too, and, and sometimes very uninterestingly. You know, I mean, Ozawa's recording was sort of the one that was around for years and years. It still is around, and it's comparatively faceless, although very nicely played. Pierre Boulez did it, of all people, and his is, I think, the most mannered. You know, there's a, there's a scene in the opening Fandango, I mean, a section of the opening Fandango, where Faya marks in the score to hold back two notes. It's dump ba da 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 dum bump bump ba da 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 dum Well, you're supposed to hold back those two notes, but there's a real interpretive issue, and that issue is this. That rhythmic figure gets repeated about 300 billion times in the course of the Fandango. You can't do that every time or else the whole thing is going to hang fire. It's never going to get moving. And also, you, you can't exaggerate the hold on those notes, as Boulez does. It's dun da 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 dum bum bum But, you know, it's like, oh, come on. Just a little bit of emphasis. dum ba da 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 dum bum bum ba da 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 dum And then you're in business. You know, it works. And then you don't do it after it gets going. Don't worry about it, because you don't want to stop the music dead in its tracks. I mean, some of these things to me seem to me just obvious issues of musicality, but as we know that obvious issues of musicality aren't necessarily obvious to a lot of conductors. So anyway, that, that's Azawa and Boulez. And also Dutois did it. And his recording, of course, was recommended because he was Dutois, and Dutois was a Decca artist. And Decca and Dutois in Montreal were the flavor of the month in the UK press, particularly gramophone. And everything that they did was, you know, oh my God, the latest fabulous recording in the Church of Saint Eustache in Montreal, and it's fabulous and terrific and whatever. Boring. That's what it is. It's just boring. So I, I, I would rule out those three out of hand. And as far as Spanish recording goes, good luck finding them. I mean, because of the new Harris Casado, Harmonia Modi seems to be paying no attention to its earlier recording with, with Josep Pons, which was quite good. It wasn't great, but it was very good with the Granada Symphony Orchestra. And, you know, Ovidis, Astre, Valois, Naive, whatever that conglomeration is called this week, they had a very good recording with, um, with Columier conducting. I think that has also disappeared. I, you know, I mean, it's just, you just have to explore Consider it a treasure hunt because the piece is a treasure. But anyway, let me tell you about what I think are the six best recordings. And if you find them, more power to you. First, this one is a real sleeper. This is Gerard Schwartz with the London Symphony on Delos. It's coupled with Carol Rosenberger's adequate but not fabulous Nights in the Gardens of Spain. But my God, the three-cornered hat is spectacular. It is the most sharply rhythmic, exciting, physical performance that I've ever heard. And the, son the sonics are absolutely spectacular. I think it's still around. You may be able to find it. And if you can, it's definitely worth a listen. You should really give it some very serious consideration. Next, Jesus Lopez Cobos in Cincinnati on Telarc. Now, again, Spanish conductors aren't always the best at this music, but some of them are. <laughs> and, and Lopez Cobos was a wonderful conductor, sensitive musician, a thinking man's performance of the three-cornered three hat, maybe. Very, very sensitive, detailed, elegant in places, but not without its, you know, more rambunctious qualities. And the Telarc recording, of course, is superb. So if you can find this one, it's worth having. It comes with the homenajes, which is a shorter sort of coupling than you know some of the other versions out there but can't go wrong next jan pascal tortelier with the philharmonia in really good form on chandos a gorgeous recording and i like the coupling into the albanis iberia you know in the arbos orchestration which is very very excitingly done and absolutely brilliant disc and a success in, in every respect. Tortelier was very good in this French style music, as you know. He didn't always have the best orchestras. You know, he, had, he did the debut C cycle at Ulster and whatnot, but which wasn't bad. It just wasn't fabulous. But this is because he's got a great orchestra and he really uh, lets his hair down. A classic now. Raphael Frubeck de Burgos. This one is coupled with Atlantida, but EMI also issued this performance in its great recordings of the Century Series, I think with La Vida Breve. You can find it, which is the important thing. Frubeck de Burgos, of course, was a wonderful conductor in Spanish music. 
He was a little bit typecast. He did a lot of his best work simply as a choral conductor, like in Mendelssohn's Elijah or Carmina Burana. He, you know, he was really a very, very fine artist. And this performance isn't the most dazzlingly zippy of all of them. It has a certain a certain weight to it, but it's it's extremely extremely soulful and characterful, and it's beautifully recorded too from you know EMI back in you know its its vintage days, and uh, it's worth having if you can find it. Now come in my view the two classics, Alcer May. Now Alcer May is interesting because Alcer May with the Swiss Romand Orchestra, he conducted the premiere in 1919. And I went to him, naturally, to find out what the deal is with that dump, ba da 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 bum bum you know, in the Fandango. I figured he would know how it was really done because he's the first person to do it. Well, he recorded the piece twice. There's a mono version and this, his much better stereo version. The mono version, he doesn't do it at all. He just ignores it. Here he does it, exactly right in my view. So all of that goes to show that the guy who did the premiere is not necessarily your best source for the answer to these tricky little interpretive questions. This particular reissue comes with Alicia de la Rocha doing Nights in the Gardens of Spain, which of course she did magnificently. And this was um, her first version for DECA with Sergio Comisiona and the better of the two. Her, her last one was also with Frubeck de Burgos, but I think it was a little heavier um, a little bit more labored. It's also very attractive, but you know, it's all comparisons, right? Everything is relative. So you got to have an ulcer May. I mean, you really do, because he did have a, a special authority as the guy who premiered the work, and happily he was around to make a magnificent recording in stereo. And so who are we not to own it as a result? But finally, I, I have to tell you, this is a new recording, and it shocked the daylights out of me. Juan Ho Mena with the BBC Philharmonic on Chandos. Chandos has obviously become the three-cornered hat label, but this performance was shockingly fabulous. I say that not because Mena is not a good conductor, he is, but because the BBC Philharmonic, which I usually regard as possibly the dullest ensemble before the public today, really plays. All of which goes to show, as Mahler once said, there are no bad orchestras, only bad conductors. If they get interested, if they get galvanized, they can do it. And here they do. And even better, you've got Bavuze, Jean-Eflamme Bavuze, doing Nights in the Gardens of Spain. Now, Bavuze has become a major, major artist, certainly a major recording artist at the keyboard these days. I mean, his debut C cycle was fabulous. His Haydn sonatas are fabulous. And this is fabulous. This is a great Nights in the Gardens of Spain. It's a very, very difficult piece to record. And so if you're looking for this coupling, really, Faya's two major orchestral masterworks, here you go. Thank you, everybody, and keep on listening.